already still working on that semester two final review and I'm now working on that second page. So now we're working with those inscribed angles and those central angles. So make sure you can see in that formula sheet that you have, again, that inscribed angle, we're saying that's angle BAC is half of the arc that's given. So that angle BAC is gonna be 22 since this arc BC is 44. However, central angle is gonna be the same as the arc. So if this arc AB is 94, that means the measure of ACB is also 94. So make sure you're just using those two definitions for these two problems. So it says to find those amounts A and B. And so what I'm gonna do is this. I can say, hey, I know that if I can say this arc right here is 80, and then this is from uh, using, so this is gonna be our inscribed angle. So we have this inscribed angle 40 degrees. That means that this arc is 80 degrees. I also know that this inscribed angle D is gonna be also 40 degrees since we can use that arc that we had. So same kind of setup again for the angle B, real simple. However, for angle A, we've got to do a little bit of calculation. So this is what I know. I know that, what do we have here? I know that the three angles in this triangle have to add up to under 80 degrees. And I also know that this angle right here, I can say this angle X towards this middle part. Let's, let me say it like this. I can say angle A plus B plus X is gonna be 180 degrees because that's just our simple uh, triangle formula. So that means I can set it up like this. I know that since this makes a straight line, again, I can say uh, 180, 180 minus 65 is going to be equal to X, which is going to be 115. And so that tells me that if I have my angle 40, 115, that means I have like this, I have 180 minus 115, minus 40, because I'm looking at these three angles inside this triangle, is gonna be our angle A, which is gonna be 25 degrees. So again, make sure you're careful on some of those setups. You can use those angle definitions that you have for these problems. And then for number 10, similar setup, but now we're gonna say we have central angle. So this is gonna be a central angle, is that angle C. And what I can do is this. I can use this angle that it gives, and I can kind of extend this out. And so I'm going to say that, hey, this arc from here to here is going to be 84 degrees, since 42 times 2 is 84. So this arc on the outside is going to be 84, which means that this central angle right here is going to be 84 degrees. And I can say that, hey, since we have a central angle and it creates this X, we're gonna say this is a vertical angle. So vertical angle are equal. So I'm gonna say C is gonna also be 84 degrees. All right, so now working with number 11, again, use those formulas that you have on the back now. I can say, all right, I have a pyramid and I have some cones. Again, we have a service area and volume for both the cone and the pyramid. Make sure that you're following these steps. Still have to use the Pythagorean theorem to be able to solve for our slant height. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna draw my right triangle. I'm gonna say, okay, if I'm thinking of this as my right triangle, again, I'm talking about this right triangle right here. Notice how it has that right angle but we're, notice how it's set up in the base. We're, we can't say this side is 11. We're saying it is going to be half of 11, which is, let me double check, 11 divided by two should be 5.5, yep. So at 5.5, we have our height is 12, and we're looking for a slant, slant height L. 
use that Pythagorean theorem to be able to solve for L. So I can say, all right, I can say, all right, I have a second square root, I have 12 squared, 12 squared plus 5.5 squared. So our slant height, L, is going to be about 13.2. And this is helpful because we need to use it for our formulas. I can also trace the base and redraw the base. So we have a square base since both those side lengths are 11. That means all those side lengths are 11. I can say the area of this base is going to be those side lengths times each other. So that 121. And I have uh, the per uh, perimeter of our base is going to be 44 since we have add up all the sides. So now again, make sure you're using those formulas. So I'm going to say surface area is going to be equal to our slant height times the perimeter of the base divided by 2 plus the area of the base. Again, when you uh, calculate those like this, I can say I have 13.2 times 44 divided by 2. And I have plus 121. So I'm going to say it's going to be about 411.4, and I'm going to say centimeters squared, since we're talking about that surface area. For our volume, again, make sure you're just using that simple uh, area of the base times the height divided by 3. So I'm going to say I have 121 times 12 divided by 3. Again, calculate that carefully, 121 times 12 divided by 3. So I'm going to say our volume for this pyramid is going to be 484, and we say it's centimeters cubed. Again, be careful. We're not always going to say that, you know, the surface area is less than the volume. It always depends on the shape and the situation. So make sure you're not making that generalization. Just be careful and make sure you're using those formulas for yourself. So with the cone, again, make sure you're saying it like this. Gives that diameter, like we talked about before. And so this is diameter. And we're going to say our radius is going to be 9. Again, radius is half of the, di the diameter. Again, be able to find your slant height. And so I'm going to set it up like this. I'm going to say, OK, I have 9 on the bottom because that's half of the entire length. I have 18 on the side, I'm looking for that slant height L. So I'm going to say, use that Pythagorean theorem, I have 18 squared plus 9 squared. Take the square root of that, I'm going to say it's going to be about 20.12 with values after it. Make sure you find the area of your base, that big B, which is going to be pi times the radius squared. So I'm going to say, I have, let's have pi times the radius, which is 9 squared. So we're going to say it's going to be about 254.46 with values after it. And make sure you're using those values that it has. Again, you don't have to sit there and type it out. You can use those arrow keys to highlight and you can copy and paste it. So now I'm going to say our right, surface area is going to be our area of the base plus pi times the radius times the slant height. So we're going to say, all right, we have area of the base plus we have pi times the radius, which is 9, times the slant height, which we can copy and paste. Make sure this is all on here. So again, I have first value, area of the base plus uh, pi times the radius times the slant height. We're going to say all together our surface area is 823.5. We have miles squared. For that volume, still the same setup as your pyramid, so that one's easy to do. So I'm going to have area of the base. So I have area of the base times our height, which is 18, divided by 3. So we're going to say it's all together going to be 1,526.8 miles cubed. All right. So again, make sure you're taking your time on those. Make sure you're using those right formulas. Moving on underneath of that, still same setup for these problems as well. I'm going to draw my right triangle first. I have 
five as my height. I'm looking for my slant height. I'm going to take half of this base length. So we're going to say it's 2.5. Again, to find your slant height, take square root 5 squared plus 2.5 squared. And then we're going to say it's going to be about 5.59. Going to use those area of the base, big B. Again, we have 5 times itself is going to be 25. And we have the perimeter of the base is 5 times 4, so we have 20. So you gotta make sure you're finding the area of the base and the perimeter of the base. And so now we can use our formulas that we have. So our surface area is gonna be equal to, I have the slant height, which is that 5.59, times our perimeter of the base divided by two, plus the area of the base. So let's have these multiplied out. So I'm gonna have this value times 20, divided by two, and then I have plus 25. So all together, the surface area is gonna be 80.9 centimeters squared. For the volume, we have the area of the base, 25, times the height, which is five, all divided by three. So we have 25 times five divided by three. Again, calculating that volume is super simple. So I'm going to say 41.6 with the 6 repeating centimeters cubed. There we go. So again, notice how, like I was saying before, doesn't necessarily mean volume is always going to be larger than surface area. So just make sure you're calculating carefully. Same idea with the cone for number 14. I'm going to have the radius is going to be 1. Draw your right triangle. Our height is 3. And so we're going to say, okay, we have that base is 1. And we're looking for slant height. And so I have second square root. We have 3 squared plus 1 squared is going to be about 3.16. We're going to find the area of the base, so we're going to say big B is going to be pi times the radius squared, which that one's super simple since it's pi times 1 squared, which is just going to be pi. So we have about 3.14 values after it. We're going to say surface area. So we have surface area, big B, area of the base times pi, or sorry, area of the base plus pi times the radius times the slant height. So we have our area of the base, which is just pi, plus pi times the radius, which is one times the slant height, which we found here. So all together, it's gonna be about 13.1 kilometers squared for that surface area. For the volume, still super simple. We're gonna say we have area of the base, which is pi, we have our height, which is three, divided by three, sorry, divided by three, which is still going to be just pi. So we have three point, let's say 3.1 kilometers cubed. So again, make sure, again, very important that you're using those formulas, find your slant height first, and then be able to calculate it in the other values. Be sure to follow for the next video.